Hello, good afternoon. My name is Bimbo and this is Jack Williams Days. And today I will be interviewing the representative of um, the International Student Representative for the University of Neo. And uh, I have, um, uh, I have, I mean, I would, I will not say her name, I will give her the opportunity to introduce herself. So, uh, can we meet you? Hello, I'm Stella Vieira. I'm the head of International Mobility Office of the school, at school level, and I can help uh, the bachelor, inter the people interested in bachelors, but, okay, I will forward the message for the Central Admissions Office. Referring to Masters and PhD programs, I can also be a connector in the sense that we have a pedagogical unit that assists students in their applications. Thank you very much for that. So which means you're responsible for master student and for PhD student that comes to the University of New York? Yeah, yes, mainly for mobility problem, mobility programs. So once you become a student, you can you know, uh, apply to our uh, to our partners to do some short or not so short mobilities in order to you know to enhance your international footprint. Thank you very much for that. So, um, can you expand on your role in terms of um, what you do for the university vis a vis international students that come to study at the University of New York? Can you give us more insight in terms of okay, what I, you help? Okay, I can help in the sense that most of the times foreign stages, foreign uh, applicants, they don't manage well their applications in the sense that you need to look at the study programs and really know if you have the right background for that. For example, if you are interested in a, a master or a PhD in economics, if you, do, if you don't have the right background, then it will be terrible, it will be a bad experience for you. So it means that if you have all the bachelor or a master's in philosophy, or in education, don't apply to our programs, to my school, because our programs are, you know, they, our range is only economics, management and political science and international relations, and also public government, public management, okay? So, it is very important that you are aware of your previous background. Also, of, imagine that you are that you hold a bachelor or and or a master's in engineering. Due to your um, you know previous background in mathematics, you might qualify because some of our programs are quantitative, and therefore you have the background. Then you just need to study a bit more in terms of, for example, economic theory or management or um, that. It. But for example, the area of political science, you do need background in political science, or yeah, well, it is also it is also it can also be good for, uh, for example, those. Uh, in those uh, worlds, a bachelor in law, for example, because the matricial uh, uh, science is political science. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is important that you know that you are aware of your previous background. That is my main advice in order to, uh, uh, to render your experience uh, a good one and not exactly easy but something that is pleasant, you know, because in my opinion, I think that studying is also to have fun. But if you choose wrongly, then it won't be funny at all. Mm -hmm. It will be chaos, it will be a nightmare for you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So another thing is that it is also important that uh, you know that some of the courses, for example, we just have three math programs in English. 
which is masters in fi finance, the masters in economics, and the masters in business and management. There are others that are very well, uh, you know, that they are somewhat popular, and that where you can combine, you know, in terms of electives, you can go and pick up electives from uh, that are taught in English. For example, the Masters in International Business, which the bulk of the program is, <coughs> the bulk of the program is in Portuguese, as well as marketing and strategy. Still, you are always allowed to perform in, um, in English, and you are always given materials in, uh, in, in English. For example, the one in international relations whose matricial science is political science, uh, it is, most of it is also in, um, in Portuguese, but we have actually, it is funny because we have, we have always a foreign, foreign students. For example, we have there now a Nigerian student mm -hmm. and he is happy there. So they have teachers are always willing to do tutorials. Yeah, some of them, they, they, they are, some of the courses can be taught in English, mm -hmm. but they are always allowed to perform in English, mm -hmm. uh, assignments, exams, and the thesis itself, it is allowed to be written in, Port in English. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for touching on that. And uh, so, which means uh, you touched on the three courses that are taught in English. Yes. And then you also provide information regarding other courses that are not taught in English, but the school allows students yes. to write their exams. Actually, actually, both in all in all courses, you are allowed to perform in English. Mm. But there are a few that you need to have. Uh, to have proficiency in Portuguese to be admitted. For example, uh, masters in accounting, mm. because you know somehow although you have you can have for example international accounting, you know they still you know want you to be proficient in Portuguese. So I, I don't advise you to write, to, to apply to accounting. To banking economics because mm -hmm. most of it, it is in Portuguese and, um, and it is all, all in Portuguese and uh, uh, it, it is up to you to make a good choice you just need to consult our website because you have there not only the study plans but also the syllabus that can tell you something about your previous background if you feel that you are familiar with all those concepts and all those methodologies, then you can you can you can apply to that. If not, don't apply. Be wise, because it is your money and it is your time. Yeah, thank you so so much for that. And lastly, because basically all the questions that I wanted to ask you today, you really touched on each and every one of them. So the last question here that I have for you. Uh, is uh, do you have an idea of when the applications for admission for 2024 okay. will be coming? Are you a poster? Okay, so you know our timeline for online applications it is always online. So usually for the last like five ten years, they have always been in uh, March. At some point mid March and mid April. So this is the first call. And I advise you to take the first call. Why? Because most of the programs, they, they run out of the vacant places in the first application. And so those masters that have, okay, they admit like, for example, 30 students, and they get like 100 applications, so they don't need to open a second call or a third call. Yeah. So if the... If you find second call and third call, it's because they were not they. They were not fully admitted. They, uh, of course, mm -hmm. they had not. They didn't have enough applications for the first call. Uh, the first call. Mm -hmm. So, that's so it's point. not because we kept vacant places for later. It's because we didn't get because you know. Let me tell you a secret. We hate doing 
the application process. Mm. It's hard work, huge work. So screening, yeah, that's, documents. That's so if we can do it once, we want to have. The, we want to run into. The, uh, it's a challenge. So yeah. the challenge is not having. Uh, second calls mm. and third calls. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much for that. So, which means applications for 2024 2025 academic session is, uh, is I mean, will be coming out from March towards April of next yeah. year. So, can uh, I have a, a evening sure. ask? But I'd like to, to give you a piece of advice. Sure. Sometimes you think that, okay, you, you lose. Don't lose any deadline. Once you are admitted, don't lose deadlines because then you lose the... If you were admitted, you can lose your place. And when you... Uh, once you decide to enroll, please start soliciting your, the, the clearance and issuance of your study visa or research visa. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it is time consuming, it is a teething process, yeah. it is it can take over three months a lot more. And you are in distress because uh, classes usually start in mid September and one week of lost classes is chaos for you. Means that you are behind everyone else and you don't want to be left behind. Because because uh, we're not repeating, uh, mm. you know the courses mm. of course because uh, that makes no sense. So it, uh, we know that it's not your fault, but it's not our fault either. Exactly. So cla uh, teachers are not coming to repeat uh, uh, the lectures. The, the, the lectures. Mm. So lectures are not to repeat, mm. and don't expect that. Don't ask to follow the courses online because they are not online. Mm. And at some point, it can be for a couple of weeks, but if you, you know, most of the times you get your visa denied, and then you arrive here in December, and in December, this first semester is over. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, you do have deadlines, and I advise you to make sure that you have your deadline, your your visa in early September. Mm. Do not run into the risk of being caught in scams. Do not do not hire um, accommodation. Mm. It's better that you um, have a hostel booking mm -hmm. for visa purpose mm. issues yes, yes. than rent something that uh, does not scam. exist yes. because that happens. Because they always validate and check or verify yeah. all of this yeah. document that you submit. Yeah. Yes. Because, right. for example, I don't have the chance to go and, and verify the, ver the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the addresses and all that. I, I don't do that. And I don't think Bimbo can do that either. I it's don't. hard work. I don't. So, so don't run into the the into scams just because you are you know you are in a hurry to find a house. Don't rent a house before you come. Mm. Yes, and that is that, and uh, we it's an opportunity to have um, Estela Vieira speak with us. Uh, she is the international student representative at the University of Mio, especially if you are coming to study in the department or, or in the faculty of management and economy. So she is the first contact person that everybody speaks to. She she she, I mean, she was the first person I. I met you, she assisted me to integrate into the university, she gave me all the required information that I needed to be able to study and be able to integrate very well and meet other colleagues as well. So thank you very much for joining us and this is Jackpot with your day. Stay tuned, like and subscribe to our channel so that by the time we bring other opportunities your way, you will be the first to get notification. Bye-bye. So tell bye. our fans. Bye-bye.